Good morning, everybody. Welcome here. Glad that you have joined us for church this morning. Uh, We are gathered here today on a party Sunday. Party Sundays, we spend some time together celebrating the ways that we are seeing God at work uh, in our lives, in our church, in our community. And we're going to do that this morning. We are going to be hearing today some stories about the way that God has been at work in West Park. And we're going to be hearing some stories from some of the teachers about all the good things that are happening there. So, looking forward to celebrating all of that. Also looking forward to enjoying the good gifts that God has for us. That's another part of our party weeks. That includes food. So we are setting up for a potluck after the service. Please, if you have come, please stick around and be a part of this meal with us uh, so we can enjoy some of these things together. Uh, There's lots of things for us to be celebrating uh, together at this time, and there's a lot of things for us to anticipate about this coming month. We want to give you a bit of information about some things coming up so that you can be prepared for all of that. Uh, The first one, this is a really important thing for many of us here. That is our Plan to Protect training that is happening on May 9th at 6 p.m. Plan to Protect is how we uh, care for and make sure that we are taking care of the little ones and the vulnerable in our midst. Uh, This training is required for anybody who volunteers at PAC. So we're having this session. This is an orientation. If you've never taken it before, this will give you the training you need. Or if you need your regular refresher, if you're due for that, this session will work for that as well. Uh, We have a healing workshop coming up on May 4th. That's a Saturday. A one-day workshop, which is kind of a follow-up from the conference that we had in September. Chance to revisit some of those teachings, uh, some time for question and answer. Hey, there's a table in the foyer this morning. If you have questions about the healing workshop that's coming, uh, you can ask your questions to the people at the table there, and they will take care of all of that. Our most important uh, announcement this morning would be about our 24-7 prayer week, which is this week. We are starting our 24-7 prayer week. And as a church family, we are coming together. We are devoting this week to round-the-clock prayer. Uh, Prayer is always uh, important in what we do, both as a church and as individuals. But every now and then, about two or three times a year, as a church, we give this focused, intentional time to prayer together. And all of our sites are joining in this with us Uh, Our new friends at the PAW, the church in the PAW, are joining with us on this as well. So a few notes here about how you can take part and join in with the 24-7 prayer week that is this week. we got a number of different options. Uh, We have a virtual option that's available for you to do. There's a guide there that you can use for an hour of prayer on your own. You'll be sent an audio file to listen to and be led through an hour of prayer. You can do that at home or wherever you are. But we are also setting up some prayer rooms, some prayer spaces here in the church for this week. And you can sign up for a slot during the day from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. You can come to the church and spend an hour in prayer that way. And for many of us, we found that actually going to a prayer room has been an important way to make this like really concrete rather than just sitting in our pajamas at home and maybe falling asleep. Um, So we have got a number of different rooms set up here. Uh, We have two meditation rooms available for you to sign up for where you would be guided through a meditation exercise that focuses on Jesus. One of those is scripture-based and another one is story-based. But you would get an audio guide. You would have Chris Kaler's lilting voice leading you through an hour of prayer with this uh, audio file. Uh, We have got equipment for that. Like you would get an, if you come to the church, you'll get an iPad and headphones. If you want to bring your own phone, your own headphones, you can do that and be set up for that. So we have those two meditation rooms. The other prayer space that I'm really excited about is we are setting up a prayer labyrinth. 
Now, this is a really unique way to pray and to worship. It's active and it's experimental, experiential, where you'd walk through a pathway that's going to be set up in the chapel and you'll spend time at different stations, six different stations, and each of these stations is going to help you focus on Jesus in a different kind of a way. The first time that I experienced a prayer labyrinth was about 20 years ago. I was at a big event. They'd set up a prayer labyrinth. And I wasn't sure what to expect by this, sort of a new way to pray. But man, it proved to be really meaningful for me. Because as I worked through those different stations, uh, some of those stations were designed to help me get rid of the distractions that were in my life, to recognize the things that were making me anxious. Uh, Some of the stations were designed to just open up space for me to be still with Jesus. And then some of the stations led me out and prepared me to re-engage with my world. And that was 20 years ago. I can still remember some of those moments uh, from 20 years ago. There's, there, there's not many things that I can remember clearly from 20 years ago, but it, that made a real impact on me. So I am signed up for the prayer labyrinth tomorrow afternoon. I'd encourage you to do the same. Uh, All of this stuff you can sign up for on our website, mypack.tv. All of the options are there. You can get more information. Uh, And I'd encourage you, sign up for a couple of these throughout this week. Let's make this a rich week together. And this whole week is going to culminate with a worship night next Sunday night here at 6 p.m. And that's going to be a chance for us to come together and to share about all the ways that we have seen Jesus over the course of this week. So plan to be with us next Sunday night. All right. We are going to move into our party service here. So why don't you stand with me and let's uh, say this party, let's pray this, pray this party call to worship together. Father, we say thank you to you, the giver of every good and perfect gift. Thank you for the big and small joys in our lives. Thank you for food music, beauty, and laughter. Thank you for your attention, your salvation, your future. You are the source and the fountain of our joy, and it's to you that we sing with grateful hearts. Amen. Celebrate. Celebrate the freedom that we have in Him. All right, sing it out. Step out of the shadows. Step out of the grave. Break into the wild. And don't be afraid. Grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Sing it out. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Come out of the dark. Just as you are into the fullness of his love for the spirit
let's declare this truth, let's declare it over one another's lives. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name.
that God is continuing, but that he will continue to be good and do good things here and now. You do everything on purpose. I can feel your spirit stirring. I've been praying, you've been working, working it all for good. burning You're refining in the furnace All the waiting will be worth it Cause you're working it all for good Miracle after miracle Open door after open door
Let me just pray for us. Jesus, we thank you that you are powerful and that you are strong. And God, we thank you that you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. Every miracle is not a miracle for you, but it's a miracle for us because yours is the power, yours is the glory, and all things are possible in you. So we pray that you continue to move. We ask and we beg that you continue to move just like you promised you would. And we give you permission to work here now in our hearts and our minds. Show us more of yourself and show us deeper versions of yourself. Help us to know you in deeper ways here and now today. We praise you again, the giver of every good and perfect gift. Amen. Have a seat. Good morning, everybody. It is good to see you this morning. Um, I don't know, that party bumper always cracks me up, especially Dave Britton <laughs> dancing like that. I just feel like every party Sunday, we should just have him dance across the stage or something. It's pretty cool. This morning, um, we are excited to share with you some stories from West Park School and, um, and celebrate the things that God is doing there. West Park is PAC's largest ministry out of all the things that we do, West Park is the biggest thing. And it has been since 1987, which is like longer than some of you have been alive. So that's quite cool. And we're really grateful for the way that God continues to bless the school and continues to lead us forward in what he has for us. And I know that sometimes it can be a little bit awkward when we talk about West Park on a Sunday morning at PAC because not everybody sends their kids there. And as a K-12 school, there's other options in town, and they're good options. Um, and sometimes you might feel like if you don't send your kids to West Park or you haven't sent your kids there, um, that these stories aren't ones that you can really celebrate because it's not your story. But that's not the way that we look at it. We look at it kind of the same way that we would look at telling stories about our Dauphin campus. Like none of us go to church there, but this is still part of the ministry that we have as a church. And so I invite you this morning to celebrate along with us, celebrate the stories that you are part of because you're part of PAC that are happening at the school. There's some really cool things that are happening and, um, and we, wanna, we wanna celebrate what God is doing among us and in the ministries that we have. And so we invite you into that this morning. One of the things that's been a real answer to prayer over the last number of years actually for us is having Corey Wilms as our assistant principal. So Corey, if you want to come. Um, so you've been back for six years now. You were here before and then you've come back. And I have to say, if you ever get into trouble at school, you want Corey Wilms to be the one who walks you through how to make things right. I, I get to have my office right beside his and I, I get to hear the conversations that he has. And what I love about the way that you do your job, especially when kids you know, make mistakes and they offend somebody, is he takes the time to dial into what was actually happening, to have the kids talk about what they did and how to make it right. But you go even further than that and you really pull out the gold in each kid. You affirm how God made them, the strengths that they have, how you're so excited that you get to know them. And it would be so easy at a Christian school, you know, to say like, so you did the bad thing and didn't listen to your teacher. Now let's pray about it. Jesus, please help them not do the bad thing and listen to their teacher. But you really don't do that. When you pray for kids, you're praying words of affirmation and prophesying over them who God made them to be, how they are incredibly made by their creator. And you watch kids going into your office like, oh, I'm in trouble. And you walk them come out and they're about 10 feet tall, walking around, gonna make everything right and ready to fix what they've done, but also knowing that that makes them loved by God, that they're not 
they're not uh, ashamed or anything like that. So the way you do that is masterful, and the patience that you have to do that time and time and time again is, is definitely an answer to prayer. So we are very, very grateful for you. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Lydia. Mm -hmm. uh, when I came back to West Park um, in the admin role, I wasn't sure how that would be because I knew that uh, that was one of the expectations is that I would deal with the behavioral <laughs> issues. And I wasn't sure if that would be something that would uh, take a lot of energy or would give me energy, and it actually has ended up being the latter. It is really fun when you see a, a kid who expects to you know, get a real talking to or whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, they actually end up feeling encouraged at the end and then more motivated to do better the yeah. next time. That's one of the most rewarding things about my job, actually. <laughs> That's cool. So here at West Park School, we have a slogan. Um, it's academics for today. Uh, character for tomorrow, and Jesus forever. And that kind of reflects our goal that we have as a school, um, where there are some things we know that are going to stick with kids for a short period of time. Maybe some of the academic things might be a little bit longer, but generally speaking, it's a little bit shorter term. And then the character uh, sticks with them for their life, and then Jesus, of course, stays with them for all of eternity. So this morning, we want to share a few stories from the last year um, and a half or so around each of those three ideas. Yeah, so let's start with academics for today. One thing that really strikes me about our Academics for Today vision is the strength of our teaching staff. And every year it just continues to get stronger. Um, we can, we'll talk a little bit more and you'll hear about our strong teaching staff, but um, also God has been ringing us those really strong teachers, but not just good teachers, teachers with a heart for Him and a passion for learning. And it's been really cool to see Him build that among us. Yeah, and one of the cool things that I get to do as part of my job is tour around the school and pop into different classrooms and see what's going on. And I consistently see well-planned lessons from our teachers. They have obviously put a lot of time um, and care into planning lessons that are creative and that meet the different uh, learning styles and uh, learning needs in the classes, which is really great. And even in the last few years, sometimes you hear about um, you know, the after effects of COVID and some of the learning gaps, but we've seen some learning gaps get shored up really well because of the creativity and dedication of our staff. And I know that you have shared uh, with the church the story about how Jeremy Daniel came to us mm -hmm. with the, the chance encounter at the ice cream shop in town. <laughs> Uh, if you haven't heard that story, ask Lydia about it afterwards. It's pretty cool. Uh, so Jeremy does a great job teaching um, early and middle years phys ed here and a, a good job with the grade seven social class as well. Um, we also had uh, Talia Velikot uh, join us on staff a few years ago. And she does such a great job creating a warm and caring community um, in her classroom. She builds such great connections with her students. Uh, my youngest son is in grade six, so has Talia as a teacher this year. And there's been a lot of days this year where he's sick and he does his best to fake well so that he can come to school because he has such a great connection with his teacher and he doesn't want to miss out on any time with her or any of the fun things that they're going to be doing that day. Um, we also had uh, Sierra Frick join us um, in the high school. She does an excellent job teaching ELA and some of the electives here. And my oldest son is in some of her classes, mm -hmm. and he loves going to class with her because uh, he says we get a lot of work done, but we also have a lot of fun too, Dad. He says it's really great. Um, we also had Tamaya Soon join us this year in grade one, and she is such a, an energetic and fun person to have on staff, and she connects really well with the teachers um, as well, and she's such a great team player. And we also have uh, Georgina Trusty, who has joined us kind of midway through the year um, to fill in for a mat leave, uh, but she took over the early years music program, and she has done an excellent job. I'm just kind of curious, how many of you were at the Easter Chapel? Okay, so, yeah, quite a few of you. Um, it was great to see the job that she did along with the early year staff uh, to get those kids prepared to lead us in worshiping Jesus for what he did for us. It was very powerful to be led by the kids yeah, in that way. Was. And uh, you were talking about some of the conversations I have with students in the <laughs> office. There was a funny one. Georgina doesn't actually even know about this one, but uh, just on Friday, there was a, a student in grade two that was kind of having an off day. And I talked with him um, in the afternoon and he kind of got settled down and I felt he was probably ready to go back to class. So I said, hey, you, you think you could uh, you know, be a little bit more respectful and have a good afternoon? And he said, 
yeah, I think I'm probably ready to go back to class. Which class do I have now? So I looked at the schedule. I said, oh, it looks like your class is in music. He's like, oh, oh, music. He goes, I don't like music. But I really like Mrs. Trusty. You guys are lucky to have her here. <laughs> I said, you're right. We are. I'll tell her about that sometime. So we are very blessed to have the teachers that we have on staff. There's a, a few other new ones, actually, that we'll be talking about a little bit later on. But I think of uh, that verse in Ephesians 3, verse 20, where it talks about how God will do more than we can ask or imagine. We are so blessed to have the solid staff that we do. Yeah, we do. Um, part of my role as the principal is I get a chance to sit down every month with our Parent Advisory Council, and that's led by Paige Fretz. And in that time, they talk about different concerns that parents will have, and their moms and dads, and we even have a grandma of one of the students who's on the council, and she's great. Um, and we talk about how to make things better for parents and better for students, and that home and school connection, which is so very, very vital. But the thing that I love probably the most about our Parent Advisory Council meetings is we always start off with prayer. And the parents take turns praying for the school, and they talk about, in their prayers, they pray for the teachers, they thank they thank God for them and they pray blessings over them. They pray the Holy Spirit would be so close to them and clear with how they're doing their jobs and teaching. And it's, it's, it's really a beautiful time to see the support that we have from our parent community. And it also reminds me a little bit too of every month at the board meeting, at the end of our business meeting, when we're finished talking about the business of the school, um, the school board, which is also the same people on the elders board for PAC, take some time and pray, and the passion that they have for the things that are happening in this place um, comes through with their prayers, and we're really, really blessed to be able to have such strong prayer warriors be praying for us and for the work that, this, that is happening at the school. Um, there's kind of a cool story that happened this year that um, we kind of got to see from the outside of some, you know, every year you kind of get you can kind of see that teachers are maybe struggling a little bit. It's been a little bit discouraging. And I love the connection that parents and the whole community have in building up our teachers. And so for hearing a little bit more about that story, I'm going to ask Mrs. Hildebrandt. Her name is Gina, for those of you who are adults. Um, <laughs> she teaches grade three. So Gina, can you come on up? Um, so Gina, tell us a little bit how this past year you've heard how God has been working in your classroom and using you in some really amazing and miraculous ways. All right, so, okay, sorry, I'm used to speaking in front of little kids, so <laughs> I'm just going to pretend you guys are all in grade three. <laughs> All right, so at a time when I was actually feeling pretty discouraged and uh, needed a little bit of encouragement, a parent of one of my previous students approached me and uh, thanked me for helping his daughter learn how to read. And he explained that she came into my classroom as a struggling reader, and now she's one of the strongest readers in her group. And I explained that it wasn't just me, but her literacy group and a lot of support staff, as well as her willingness to work really, really hard. And I just love how um, God knows when you need that, that uh, encouraging word, and, and he puts people in our, our paths to, to do that for us. So mm -hmm. I love that about working here as well. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I do love how you and our other teachers work so well as a team to, to partner to do the best thing we can for the students and also partner with parents and that relationship that you have that a parent will come up and be able to have that conversation. Um, and each class already always has its own dynamics, right? Like some years are more challenging than others. Sometimes the dynamics of the kids in the class and how they get along with each other can be really challenging. And then also teachers don't just teach, they also have other things going on outside of their life. And so some years are harder than others. Um, and then on top of that, you have to get through the curriculum and teach the kids the things that grade threes need to learn about, like the plant life cycle and different things like that. So um, those can be really difficult as well. Yeah, I actually, this year has uh, been quite challenging in different ways and as well as um, personally for myself and in the classroom. 
And uh, something that was really cool that um, kind of turned things around for me was here, uh, back a number of party chapels when uh, Eagle's Wings flight group was here talking and uh, they were sharing about how God moved in, in their situation. And at the end of that, Pastor Chris um, was encouraging us to listen to a song and to pray uh, for God to show us what kind of dreams that he had for us and what kind of dreams he wanted to bring out in us. And he encouraged us to speak it out loud. And uh, I thought for sure he would speak into some of my personal stuff going on. But uh, so clearly, he showed me just a picture of him lifting up my classroom, all of the kids in my class and me included, and uh, just telling me that it won't be um, a matter of trying to get by day by day and just doing my best, but he was going to help us to, to just soar um, until the end of the school year and finish really strongly. And uh, so that just kind of turned around my thinking and uh, gave me different perspective and I felt a peace come over me and, uh, and go with me into the next week and I became more diligent praying for my class and for specific students individually and, uh, and that was a really, really great week. And we actually had a meeting with some parents um, a few weeks later, and they asked me what happened, what did I do to change things um, with their son, and uh, what was going on there, because they noticed a, a big difference. And I think they were waiting for me to tell something like some educational trick or or how I changed things academically or whatever. And I just had to tell them the story of uh, Eagle's Wings and, and what God showed me there. And I just said, I just prayed. And uh, God worked through that. So that actually was really good in being able to bring a different dynamic even into that meeting. And we were able to pray for them and with them. And, and it was just a really cool moment. It was awesome. Yeah, I know a lot of times we kind of poke fun at uh, Pastor Chris about how the waterworks come on, but I was in on that meeting. And uh, when the parents asked what the reason was for the change in their kids' behavior, I wasn't sure if you would have the courage to say what the real reason was. And you just decided to go for it, and it did totally shift the tone of that meeting. And then it kind of felt like, man, it would be out of place if we didn't offer to pray for this family, and they were more than willing to accept that, and it was really cool. And there were a few tears. <laughs> it was very awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot for sharing with us, Tina. Let's give her a hand. Yeah, the second part of our vision for West Park School is character for tomorrow. And there are so many different stories that I could tell you about this. We have uh, lots of different cases of students who are working hard to um, serve other people, uh, to take responsibility for their own actions and just growing in maturity um, and also reconciling uh, relationships as mm -hmm. well. Sometimes uh, students you know, have a beef with each other about something <laughs> and then they need to work it out. Um, but one of the stories that relates to reconciliation that was really powerful this school year was in the fall uh, for Truth and Reconciliation Day. Uh, we invited a few guests from Long Plain First Nation. We had Marshall Prince and Craig uh, Redwood come in. Um, and Marshall was speaking about his experience in residential schools and just the importance of this day. And then Craig led us in some uh, drumming and uh, a few songs as well. And it was a really powerful time, um, just of reconciliation in our school community coming together um, to recognize what had happened in the past and how we need to move forward in a more positive way. And then right towards the end, um, they had led us in uh, some drumming, some singing, and they actually had the entire group of people um, in the gym here, including the parents, 
um, all joined together in a round dance, which was really neat. And they're explaining the significance of that. And then right at the end, Marshall uh, said to me, hey, Mr. Williams, can you kind of clear everybody out? There's a grade 12 student who wants to dance in front of everybody. And he told me who it was. And I said, ooh, Marshall, I don't know. Like, she's usually pretty shy. Like, I don't know if you should, like, call her out like that. And he said, no, she asked. And I said, oh, okay. That changes everything. Let's clear it out. And so um, she got up in front of the entire school. We all sat down. She got up in in front of the entire school and danced for several minutes for us. And it was so cool that she felt safe enough to do that, um, that she would share uh, a part of her culture that she was so proud of. And it wasn't lost on me that 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 moment happened in a private Christian school. It was just beautiful. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I remember that day too, and I was standing at the back of the, of the gym in the, in the doors there and, and watching her come out and in her ribbon skirt and her hoodie and, uh, <laughs> and dancing. And just my vantage point was she was pretty much right on the school's logo, and you could see the cross in the background as mm. she's dancing. And um, so you talk about Pastor Chris with the waterworks. I'm sitting there back, like, I'm not crying, you're crying, someone's cutting onions. <laughs> um, and then a couple of months later, Parker Friesen, who's our Nipawa campus pastor, as part of his campus pastor in residence, um, was helping me with grade 12 Bible class teaching Bible. And he was talking to them about calling and vocation, and we were talking about spiritual gifts and how God has a, has a call on our lives, and that might be what we do for a living, but it also might be something else. And we had a chance to, sh- to chat about that and share, and I talked about what I felt my calling was, and Mr. Siemens is in the classroom too, so he was talking about his, and Parker is talking about his. And then and then he asked all the kids to go around the room, and what do you feel like your calling is? And we got to that particular student. She's like, I feel like my calling is to be an ambassador for my culture, to show other people um, the, the richness of it and to share it with as many people ha- as, will, um, as will see it and to inspire other kids. And as soon as she was saying that, again, I was like wiping the tears from my eyes, but I was thinking about the light in the little girl's eyes in our school, in the elementary grades, as they were watching her dance in front of the whole school. And it was just like a beautiful time of her being, um, just seeing the delight and feeling the delight of her creator in her. And that's what we want for all the students, is to be able to feel that delight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was one of the most powerful moments of the year, for sure. It yeah. was awesome. Uh, One of the things that stands out to me too is uh, we've got uh, one class in our school where they got off to a little bit of a rough start. Uh, Some of the students weren't necessarily treating each other the best and the teacher of that class reached out to the parents and they have partnered together uh, since then right up until now in prayer for that class community and we've seen uh, relationships restored in really quite miraculous ways so that's very cool. Um, Another thing that stands out to me too is um, I was doing one of the sessions at the in-school retreat a couple Fridays ago, and it was about community. And I asked the students as part of the session, you know, what's one of the healthiest and best communities you've ever been a part of? And some of the players on the uh, varsity boys basketball team said, well, you know what, actually it's the basketball team this year. And... um, You guys know Dave Britton, he's the coach of the team, and if you've ever been to a game here, you've seen that he is very intense about uh, having having his players uh, put their best effort out on the floor. But he also does a great job in mentoring those young men to be uh, players with integrity and uh, representing their faith well. And it was really cool for me to see my own son Um, have Dave as a coach for the first time and to see the impact that he had on uh, my own son's life. It was really neat. Yeah, it was also pretty neat. The other day I was was in the school on a Friday night and there was one kid left waiting for his parents. Dave was waiting for Melanie, his wife, to pick him up and he's like, oh, I got five minutes and he walked by the gym and the stage was out from a school thing and he needed to get it put away for youth. So he walks by and he's like, oh, I got five minutes, I'll put it away. So he walks in the gym and I'm kind of like, he's been in there for a while. So poke my head in and here the student who was waiting for his his ride Dave's found him and he's teaching him how to put the stage away and then getting him to put all the things that were in the gym away too and the two of them are kind of cleaning up as Dave's like building into him so it would have taken him five minutes on his own took him about 15 um, because he was building into that that kid but you just can't um, you can't you can't put a price on how much value there is in just his he can't help but mentor people Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I keep hearing things about um, 
people's first impression of West Park School and just how um, kind people are to newcomers to our school and how included they feel. I remember uh, one time in the last couple of years um, with a grade eight class that I teach, um, I teach them Bible and I also have devotions with them. And I was asking uh, the class about what they appreciated about the school. And there was a girl who um, came from not the best experience and she wasn't really sure what to expect here at West Park, but she said, you know, it's really amazing how inclusive this school is. She said, I'm, you know, I'm from a different culture, I've been bullied in the past, and here I just feel so safe. <laughs> and so that was really neat to hear about. This is a, a very inclusive place to be in, and a safe place for people. And it kind of makes you wonder, uh, this character that we're building into these students and trying to encourage with them, makes you wonder what that will look like as they grow beyond West Park. Yeah, for sure. But in some ways, we actually know that. Um, because one of the ways that me personally, that God has been blessing me in this last little season is watching our students grow up, but then watching them return here, some of them, to work here. Um, it's really amazing to see how they've become such amazing men and women of character and how they are wanting to build into the next generation of kids. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, Ethan Hookstra. Uh, we've got uh, Kaylee Elias and Callie Weeb doing a really good job of mm -hmm. uh, working as educational assistants here. And then we've got um, Danica Solomon, who because of her competence and her kindness just does such an exceptional job connecting with people at the front desk here, working as a receptionist. And then uh, one of the new teachers that I didn't mention before is Janelle Hookstra, who has taken over grade four this mm -hmm. year. And she does a phenomenal job with those kids. Um, I was actually filling in there um, this last week. Uh, she was unfortunately sick. And so I went in for the day and I was kind of reading over the sub plans. I wish I had about half an hour to read over the sub plans <laughs> because they were so detailed. And I hardly had to do anything. She had trained those kids so well in what the routines are. They're like, oh, Mr. Williams, no, we do this. And you just click here on this slide. And yeah. <laughs> it was a well-oiled machine. But I know that she does a really good job connecting with her kids. And even though Janelle didn't actually go to grade school here, she was working here as an educational assistant and then got a real passion for education, went away to Ontario um, and won awards as part of her teacher education education and yeah. then we were fortunate enough that she came back here as a teacher now so uh, we're blessed to have her yeah absolutely yeah <clears throat> Yeah, and we have Bill Buchan on staff as our facility director. And then we also have Britton Thiessen, who's the director of the new daycare that we are working on building. And what I love about Brittany's story is that we began praying about this daycare probably more than 12 years ago. And one of the things that we were praying is that God would send us somebody to, to be the director of it that would be a good staff person that would fit in with our values and all of those things. And as we were praying, we we're like, where is this person? Where is this person? What we didn't realize is that she was upstairs in class while we were praying for this, because she was still in high school, um, and just how God has orchestrated that to bring her back. Uh, but this morning, I want to introduce you to our newest teacher um, that we have hired, and he was actually a former student of ours as well. And this guy brings me so much joy to see him here. So please welcome Mr. Stanley. <laughs> Like, thanks for cheering like that, but I'm kind of in some ways glad that the grade twos are in kids' church, because if they, if they were here, they would be screaming like way louder than you guys, and probably rushing the stage, I would think, yeah? Probably, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul, talk a little bit about your journey as a student and how you found yourself back here at West Park. Okay, so I started at West Park in kindergarten, and I stayed all the way until graduation. Uh, I wasn't always the most well-behaved student. Um, and although I caused my teachers some mental anguish, um, they still allowed me to be myself, even when myself was a little bit too much. Um, I always felt Jesus' love and acceptance, which uh, kept my connection to him, even when I didn't even know it was there. Um, when I graduated, I swore that I would never come back here. God showed me he had some different ideas for my life. Um, I went to Brandon. I moved to Brandon for school after I graduated. And in 2023, I saw God working heavily in my life. In December 23, I landed a substitute position uh, in Brandon at the Brandon School Division. 
Uh, it was on a Friday, and on the following Monday, I got a call from Nathan. Nathan offered me the grade two position at West Park and gave me a long three days to consider the offer. <laughs> After weighing the pros and cons and a lot of prayer, I was still stumped, but I decided I wanted to make this leap, so I did. I turned out, it turned out to be one of the best decisions I ever made, and God maybe knows what's best for me in the end. I was anxious at first to be stepping back into West Park in a completely different way, but my anxiousness quickly faded as I got to know my colleagues and my amazing grade two class. They are so lovely. My coworkers quickly became my friends and they made me feel right at home and affirmed me as an educator and a person. Work conversations are always a highlight of my day. The love and support I feel every day reassures me that I made the decision God wanted for me. Uh, I ran into my best friend from grade six on Friday, who I hadn't seen in almost 14 years. Uh, he only spent one year at West Park, just the grade six year, and we were pretty much inseparable. He told me that his time at West Park was the best time of his life, and he had never been in a place where people were so kind and caring for him. I cannot wait to continue to be a part of the school community where Jesus' character so clearly abides. Cool. Awesome. Paul, I love that you're here. I just, it gives me so much joy as I walk down the, uh, down the hallway and see Paul here or see him in the coffee, like making coffee with the, with the other staff. I just love that you're here and you're such a great teacher. And I, the one thing that I just, it gives me so much joy about Paul is he has this heart for kids who, uh, how did you put it, are a little bit much <laughs> and connects with them so very well. And so it's such a, it's such a cool thing that that you're here, and I'm really excited to see how this will continue to grow and how you'll continue to grow into becoming a, a ma more, even more amazing teacher. The final part of our vision, though, is Jesus forever. And honestly, we could probably take another, like, four days to talk about that, but don't worry, we won't. Um, but kids are learning at an early age to listen to God. They, the teachers have prophetic words prayed over them at the beginning of our year. The emerging tradition that we have of kids doing love blasts where they listen to God for their classmates and then write that out on a piece of paper. They do that as their birthday celebrations in their class. We had the mayor of Portage come in and accept some donations for a cancer care fundraiser that we took part in. And the JK and kindergarten class laid their hands on her and prayed. And she was just a sobbing mess at the end. It was awesome. She was so, so incredibly grateful for her experience here. Um, if you come in on a Wednesday, chances are you'll probably see some roving groups of children or teenagers walking around trying to find people to pray for. Um, they do that in high school house churches, and they, Mrs. Hildebrandt, who was just up here, she does that in her upstation for chapel, where K-4 to four kids walk around seeing who they can pray for. And I wish every single one of you could have the opportunity to have the little hands of a kid in grade two or three put their hands on you and pray for you, or the awkward, sweaty hands of a 14, 15-year-old do the same thing. It's a really cool experience to see God working through those kids. Yeah, we have a lot of pretty powerful experiences like that, uh, just because kids are courageous uh, to hear from God and then to pray for mm -hmm. other people. Um, even just this last week at school, um, in the high school house church that I'm a part of leading, uh, we've kind of been leading up to this all year, but the kids said at the start of the year that they'd actually be interested in going out into the community and mm -hmm. praying for people. So um, not all the kids in the group were comfortable with it, and that's okay. So some of them stayed back and they worked in the grade one classroom helping out there. But there was a group of kids who went out with myself and Parker to Walmart, and we asked different people there if we could pray for them. And there was one person who said, no, nah, you know what, my life's going pretty well. That's okay, thank you very much, have a good day, and that's all right. But everybody else that we came across was more than happy to accept prayer. So the kids were able to pray for them. We got uh, words from God that we thought would be encouraging for them that we were able to share, and they were very built up by that. So that's that was cool. neat. Yeah. Uh, and then another little moment um, in one of the middle years classes this week, there was a student who came with crutches. I was like, oh man, what happened? They're like, ah got hurt in uh, badminton. I was like, hmm, maybe we should pray for you. He said, you know what, we have had other people in our building um, have ankles healed before. How would that be if we prayed for you? Yeah, sure, we could give it a, a try. So we did, and it uh, seemed like it was a little bit better. And then the next day, there were no crutches, and the student said, you know what, I can actually run around. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. And that was just this last week. Um, one of the things that really stands out to me, though, 
about um, Jesus Forever is the way that um, students here have a chance to worship God. Mm -hmm. And I already mentioned the Easter Chapel with the young kids leading us in worship. That was so powerful. And then a couple Fridays ago at our in-school retreat for the high school, it was amazing to be led by the high school worship band. And Josh Bader does so many amazing things at our school, leading kids not just in musical abilities, yeah. but also in connecting with God's heart. And so um, the band who was up here, whether it was Jayla playing the drums or uh, Chloe and Haven on the keys or Brendan on the bass or AJ, uh, Sadie, um, Kai, um, on vocals, and Waylon. Who else and Waylon as well, on vocals. Um, you could tell that they weren't just going through the motions of what they had trained to do. They were actually connecting with yeah. God and you could see that they were worshiping while they were leading us in worship and it was so powerful. And a special little um, aside for me was that uh, my own son was up there uh, leading worship for the first time and once again, pretty tough not to get choked up during that time, <laughs> it was very special. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, this is one of the strongest and most meaningful things to me as a parent. Um, a few months ago, my daughter in grade six came home. She had a big stack of papers. She just had her fake birthday because she's a summer birthday. So they just randomly chose a day that worked for her teacher to have her fake birthday where the kids in her class did a love blast and listened to God and then wrote stuff down. And she's got them up on her, in her room. She's got um, things from her friends that say things like, you were made on purpose, not by accident and that. And, and in, the, in the whole list of stack of papers, there is one that this is, and this is, I just want to read this to you. This is what it said. It said, uh, bright, blooming, and beautiful. Built on a strong foundation. You, it said, Alethea, this is the word I received for you. You are a bright light in your class. You are blooming into a beautiful woman of God. And you are sturdy. You know who you are, and you know whose you are. Happy fake birthday. Love, Mrs. V. And so I want to introduce you to Talia Valicott, our grade six teacher who wrote that to my daughter. <laughs> and Talia, if you can tell us about a time when you, like when you notice your students, um, what you notice about your students when it comes to prayer and, and Bible. Yeah, uh, every day uh, in, our, in our schedule, we have time to do devotions. And so during one of our devotional times, uh, I decided to open up and pray for my students. Uh, we had some hurt legs, and I think we had a headache and a hurting ankle. So, um, yeah, they, so different. I think it was four people asked for prayer. And so, like a n normal teacher, I started uh, leading out for the, with the first student. And I was like, I'll lead in prayer and start uh, doing that. And I very quickly realized that my students actually wanted to lead like in the prayer themselves, they wanted to put their hands on and choose uh, who would pray, and they wanted to, before prayer, ask that the person, uh, what's your pain, a scale of one to ten, and ask after. So I was able to uh, back off and just kind of watch and experience it, um, and that was just so cool to be able to just see them lead in that way. And we had three people miraculously healed in that mm. one devotional, which was just so cool. Yeah. Um, and then because of this, we were so excited. And then the next, the next week, I had uh, three, three other students ask, to pr ask for prayer. So we did another devotional time. And uh, we, we had a, a headache go totally away. And uh, we also had a girl jump up and down super excited because her stated pain of 11 out of 10 for her ankle <laughs> had gone down to a 3 out of 10. Nice. And it was right before phys ed class, so she was so excited about that. <laughs> so that, that was pretty, pretty sweet. Um, with that, uh, I think though, like that's so amazing, God's so good, but my favorite part of watching them uh, pray was actually listening to this phrase that a lot of them say now when they're, they're asking for healing from God. This is what they say. They say something like this, thank you God for healing us and I pray that you will heal blank, whoever it is. You have done this before in our class, and I know you can do it again. <laughs> and that's just so powerful to me. Like, what a yeah. faith-filled prayer. And I couldn't help but marvel when this was happening at how amazing West Park is, too, that this is a place that these students are... It, it's normal for miracles to happen, yeah. and it's normal for them to expect good things from their father. Yeah. Like, a few years ago, we talked about... Um, 
are sealing their floor and that idea that the ways that we would be able to stretch and reach would be the starting point for the next generation. And this is us really seeing that come true because like I think about when I learned about that and when I, my faith kind of took a bit of a, of a journey towards that expectancy that God would show up and God would do miraculous things, I was not 11. So how much is it gonna continue to grow? What is their ceiling gonna look like? We have no idea because it's just so much, so much higher than we can even imagine. Yeah, and as you say that, there was another time we were praying for healing and uh, my ceiling kind of got hit. I, as a teacher, you have schedules and you have uh, different classes you need to teach. And so we've been praying for a number of students and I was looking at the clock and realizing we had to move on and there's still one student left, but we were praying for a student and their pain was going down, but it wasn't fully at a zero like we wanted it to be or asking God for. And so I, you know, just because I had a schedule, I told the student, you know, we'll continue praying for you on our own. And, you know, God does heal long, like in longer stretches of time. And as I was saying this and moving on to the next uh, student, I had another student kind of look at me weirdly and be like, what? And he, he, he motioned for one of his friends, and I was like, no, we'll just keep praying as you pray for them. Like, I'll pray, I'll keep praying. And so they went off and continued praying, and uh, that person did get healed, and we kept, and then we were able to pray for this other one. And it just, it challenged me, because my expectancy, and I still had a, a ceiling with my prayer and what I had expected to have happen. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just always learning from my students as well <laughs> during these times. Um, but uh, another story I have happened during our devotions as well, and this was just, I think, last week. Uh, we were reading the story of Esther uh, straight from the Bible, and the kids were really interested in the story. And as I finished a chapter and we were talking about the, what, the crazy thing that Haman was doing, I think, or something, uh, one of my students, just without thinking, blurted out, this doesn't even sound like it's from the Bible. <laughs> and my, my class, I, I just think this was such a win because my, my class was reading the Bible and actually understanding and yeah. appreciating the text and, and appreciating the crazy stories that, are, that it has in it. And they were so amazed that the Bible was as interesting as it is. Um, and I think this is another thing that Westbrook does so well is that God is showing himself through his word to his kids and mm. creating a love for his word, which I think is just a beautiful thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, thank you, Talia. You know, the one thing that strikes me about all of these stories, all the ones that we've been sharing, is that each of these cases, whether it's academics for today, character for tomorrow, or Jesus forever, that our students actually encounter their creator. And they get to do that in a, really, in a very real way. If you think about it, we can think ourselves into faith, but then when our thoughts change, and new ideas come ac we come across. Thinking is good, but we can't think our way into faith without the idea that we could think our way out. Same thing with feelings. Feelings, we can feel our way into faith. We can feel our way that Jesus loves us, but then feelings can change as well. But there's something really concrete when you encounter Jesus, when you encounter him in a real way, whether he's healing you, whether he's helping you learn to read, whether he's helping you in your behavior in a classroom situation, and you encounter the, the love that Jesus has for you in such a real way, that's the kind of stuff that galvanizes the faith of our kids. And that's the thing that we are so very excited for, um, that they would experience the God who loves them, that he, they would experience the God who made them, and he, the one who calls them his own, and that no matter where they go afterwards, that they would have that experience for all of eternity. So that's the stories from West Park. We're gonna ask Nathan to come up and, uh, and close us off this morning. Thanks, Lydia and It's fantastic to get a sampling of some of those things that are going on. I want to give, give us a chance here to both respond, but then to also receive. The response for you just might be to pick up one of these cards that's at the back on those white tables, and you will see on the card that there's a unique opportunity here until June 30th to have your donation to the Taylor Pryor Bursary Fund or the West Park Bursary Fund be matched four to one. Now you sort of one to one matching, your 50 bucks turns into 100, this is four to one. So say, for example, you want to sponsor a student for 50 bucks a month, that actually covers their entire tuition thanks to the existing West Park donors and former parents who are eager to make West Park accessible for 
all students who want to come. So that's, that's a great way for you to respond to some of the stories and, and be a part of this, what you heard this morning. But I also want you to have an opportunity to receive something this morning. At graduation at West Park, there's bleachers that are there and there's the students uh, that are sitting there. And on those bleachers, you've got students, I think, that are probably, maybe not in the moment, but they're thinking about their high school experience. And, and think of high school as like a, a microcosm of, of your life. Okay, so they're thinking about their high school experience and they're going, what if I had done a little better? What if I had focused a little more? What if I had been a little more diligent with it? Maybe things would be a little bit different uh, than they are now. And then maybe there's some kids up there again, this is a microcosm of life, and they're going, I've actually worked really, really hard and I barely made it across the line. What people don't know is how low my marks are. They don't know how much I'm hanging by a thread and I look really good right now, but inside I'm a mess. That's some of us. And then there's students on the bleachers that are, that are graduating that have done almost everything right. And they're wondering if they can keep that going very long and if they screw up, if they're still gonna be loved. And on that night, they're told at least three times that no matter what happens in their life, they're gonna be loved by God. They'll have endless second chances and that they are blessed. So we don't want anybody to escape from West Park School without knowing that they're blessed and loved by God, and I don't want anyone to escape this morning without knowing the same thing. So I'm gonna pray a prayer of blessing over you, remind you that you're loved, and then we're gonna sing as we do on Party Week and eat together. Let me bless you. I bless you with the knowledge that you have a heavenly Father that delights in you, that's proud of you, that points to you with a smile on its face and says, on his face and says, that one's mine. I bless you with an understanding that you have endless second chances, that the arms of the Father will always and forever be wide open to you. And I bless those of you who are tired with energy to know that even when you're tired and failing, you are welcome warmly by a Father who loves you. Let's stand and receive that blessing. If you have kids in Kids Church, this is the time when you can go and get them and bring them back as we sing a few more songs together.
keep singing let's ask the spirit to be stirring inside of us as he makes all things new let's ask him to raise our attention of him as the spirit was moving over the water spirit come move over us come rest on us come rest on us as the spirit was
Sunday's empty tomb Since when has impossible ever stopped you This is the sound of dry bones rattling This is the praise make a dead man walk again Open the grave, I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live again This is the sound of dry bones rattling Praise, make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Praise, make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Uh, feasted already today on the stories of God's goodness at West Park. So good to hear all of those things. Uh, and we are going to feast on food in just a few moments here. Uh, but a few things uh, just before that, because there's some things that we all want to do coming out of this morning. One of those is signing up for 24-7. Those different options I mentioned, take out your phones and uh, sign up for something with that. The other thing is grabbing one of these cards on the way out that Nathan mentioned. This is giving the information about how your donation to the Taylor Pryor Memorial Bursary can be matched four to one. We would be stupid not to take advantage of that. So, don't be stupid. If you <laughs> There you go. Hey, we are gonna move into our potluck uh, now. Uh, Simple instructions, you can go out the main doors at the back here and uh, hang a right, get your food, come back in, find a place to sit. And a uh, special word, if, if you're wanting to figure out ways to get more involved here at the church, we have two tables set up at the back there. There are connecting tables. They have signage on them. 
when you get your food, come and sit at those tables. There's people there who are going to be able to answer your questions about our church and about ways to get more involved in our church. So uh, grab your food, sit down there, and we would love to get to know you better so you can become an even thicker part of our family here. All right, let's sing the doxology, which will then take us into our meal. Here we go. Praise God from whom all blessings and lead the, the doxology next time we have a party week. All right. Go in peace.